Dear students, Namaskar. I hope that you all must be in pink of your health and must be excited for today's lesson. Today, we are going to discuss Chapter 13 of Science of Class 6, Fun with Magnets. Children, before we start with our chapter, we will see what we already know and I will ask you a few questions. Have you seen stickers that remain attached to iron surfaces like almiras or the doors of refrigerators? What do they contain which help them to stick? Absolutely right. It is because of magnets. When you close a refrigerator, how does the door close automatically when you bring it near? Well, this is also because of magnets. If we have to remove iron pieces from a heap of junk, which is the easiest way to do it? Very good children, we can do it with the help of a magnet. Now the question is, how was magnet discovered and what are the properties of magnets? So in today's lesson, we are going to learn more about magnets. Now we will see what we shall learn today. How magnets were discovered, magnetic and non-magnetic materials, poles of a magnet, attraction and repulsion between magnets. Also, we will see a few fun games with the help of a magnet. How magnets were discovered. It is said that there was a shepherd named Magnus who lived in ancient Greece. He used to take his herd of sheep and goats to the nearby mountains for grazing. He would take a stick with him to control his herd. The stick had a small piece of iron attached at one end. One day, he was surprised to find that he had to pull hard to free his stick from a rock on the mountain side. It seemed as if the stick was being attracted by the rock. The rock was a natural magnet and it attracted the iron tip of the shepherd's stick. It is said that this is how natural magnets were discovered. Such rocks were given the name magnetite perhaps after the name of that shepherd. Magnetite contains iron. Some people believe that magnetite was first discovered at a place called magnesia. The substances having the property of attracting iron are now known as magnets. People now have discovered that certain rocks have the property of attracting pieces of iron. They also found that small pieces of these rocks have some special properties. They named these naturally occurring materials magnets. Later on, the process of making magnets from pieces of iron was discovered. These are known as artificial magnets. Nowadays, artificial magnets are prepared in different shapes. For example, horseshoe magnet, bar magnet, cylindrical or a ball-ended magnet. Children, let us perform an interesting activity. We need the following materials for this activity. A pair of scissors, a piece of paper, drawing pin or paper clip made up of iron, a thread, magnet. First of all, take the piece of paper and draw a small kite on one corner of this paper and cut it with a scissor. Now, take the thread and hold it from one end and stick this end with the tail of the kite and at near the other end, attach an iron pin. Now, stretch the thread and bring the magnet near the end where the thread is attached with the kite. We see that the kite is flying in the air. Isn't it interesting? Now the question is, how the kite is flying in the air without any support? This is because 
the magnet attracted the iron pin. Magnetic and non-magnetic materials. The material which gets attracted towards a magnet are called magnetic. For example, iron, nickel or cobalt. The materials which are not attracted towards a magnet are non-magnetic like rubber, wood, leather, etc. As you can see in this picture. Now let us perform an activity to find out about magnetic and non-magnetic materials. You can identify magnetic and non-magnetic materials around you. For magnetic material, you will see a happy smiley on the screen and for a non-magnetic material, you will see a sad smiley on the screen. First, we will start with wood. You can test yourself with the help of a magnet to see if the material is magnetic or non-magnetic. So what kind of material is wood? Let me tell you that wood is a non-magnetic material. So we will see a sad smiley. But a sad smiley does not mean that wood is a bad material. It simply means that it is non-magnetic as we are here distinguishing the materials only on the basis of whether they are magnetic or non-magnetic. Next material is nail and it is a magnetic material. So you see a happy smiley on the screen. A paper cup, it is a non-magnetic material. Iron, a magnetic material. Coin, magnetic material. Cloth, non-magnetic material. Children, you must try this activity at home. Now let us know about poles of a magnet. What are the poles of a magnet? Children, you all know about magnets. Now we will discuss about that property of a magnet because of which a magnet attracts a piece of iron. Magnets are commonly found in home appliances like radio, television and is also found in clocks, toys, etc. Even mobile covers, file covers also have magnets in them. Today, we will discuss a new property of magnets for which we will perform an activity. To perform this activity, we need iron fillings, iron pins and a bar magnet. First, we will perform this activity with the help of iron pins. I will bring the magnet close to the iron pins. You can see that iron pins stick to the magnet. It is one of the property of the magnet to attract iron towards itself. But on observing carefully, you will find that iron pins are attached to the ends of the magnet and there are very few pins on the overall length of the magnet. Why did this happen? This means that strength of magnet is more at the ends of the magnet and these are called poles of the magnet. And now we will know about these poles. If we suspend this magnet freely in the air with the help of a thread, we find that it aligns itself in the direction of geographical north-south. The pole of magnet Towards geographical south is called south pole and the pole of magnet towards geographical north is called north pole of the magnet. Children, now let us perform the same activity with the help of iron fillings. Spread some iron fillings on a sheet of paper. Now place a bar magnet on this sheet. We observe that more iron fillings get attracted to the ends of the magnet and these ends are called poles of the magnet. That means magnet has 
more strength near the poles and it is clearly seen here. This shows that magnetic strength is more near poles than the rest of the magnet and it is clearly evident from our activities. Now let us know about finding directions. Magnets were known to people from ancient times. Many properties of magnets were also known to them. You might have read many interesting stories about the uses of magnets. One such story is about an emperor in China named Huang Ti. It is said that he had a chariot with a statue of a lady that could rotate in any direction. It had an extended arm as if it was showing the way. The statue had an interesting property. It would rest in such a position that its extended arm always pointed towards south. By looking at the extended arm of the statue, the emperor was able to locate directions when he went to new places on his chariot. Children, the statue actually worked as a direction indicator or direction finder. Let us make a direction finder for ourselves. Take a bar magnet, put a mark on one of its ends for identification. Now tie a thread at the middle of the magnet so that you may suspend it from a wooden stand. Make sure that the magnet can rotate freely. Let it come to rest. Mark two points on the ground to show the position of the ends of the magnet when it comes to rest. Draw a line joining the two points. This line shows the direction in which the magnet was pointing in its position of rest. Now rotate the magnet by gently pushing one end in any direction and let it come to rest. Again, mark the position of the two ends in its position of rest. Does the magnet now point in a direction different from the earlier? Rotate the magnet in other directions and note the final direction in which it comes to rest. Children, do you find that the magnet always comes to rest in the same direction? Now can you guess the mystery behind the statue in the emperor's chariot? We find that a freely suspended bar magnet always comes to rest in a particular direction, which is the north-south direction. Now let us know about compass. In olden days, travelers used to find directions by suspending natural magnets with a thread, which they always carried with them. Later on, a device was developed based on this property of magnets. It is known as the compass. A compass is usually a small box with a glass cover on it. A magnetized needle is pivoted inside the box, which can rotate freely. The compass also has a dial with directions marked on it. The compass is kept at the place where we wish to know the directions. Its needle indicates the north-south direction when it comes to rest. The compass is then rotated until the north-south marked on the dial are at the two ends of the needle. To identify the north pole of the magnetic needle, it is usually painted in a different color. Now let us learn to make our own magnet. Children, we will now see how we can make our own magnet and this will be called an artificial magnet. Let us perform an activity and we need some materials for this like iron needle, bar magnet and iron fillings. So let us begin our activity. You can see I have this needle with me which is not behaving as a magnet. 
and we will see how this needle will behave once it becomes a magnet. For this, you place the needle on the table and take the bar magnet and place one of its poles near one edge of the needle. Without lifting, move it along the length of the needle till you reach the other end. Be careful that the magnet should be moved along the same direction without lifting while moving it through the length of the magnet. Now lift the magnet and bring the same pole you started with to the same point of the needle from which you began. Move the magnet again along the length of the needle in the same direction as you did before. Repeat this process 30 to 40 times. Now we will test whether the needle has become magnetic or not. We can test this with the help of iron pins or iron fillings. Here we are going to use iron fillings. Place the needle on the iron fillings and let us observe carefully what happens. So you can see that iron fillings stick to the needle. Also you can observe that more iron fillings stick to the ends of the needle. So like this we can make our own magnet. I used an iron needle to make this magnet you can use an iron rod or a circular iron ring to make your magnet. Now let us know about attraction and repulsion between magnets. Let us play an interesting game with magnets. Take two small toy cars and label them A and B. Place a bar magnet on top of each car along its length and fix them with rubber bands. In car A, keep the south pole of the magnet towards its front. Place the magnet in opposite direction in car B. Now place the two cars close to one another. What do you observe? We see that they move towards each other and collide. In this position of the cars, the front of car A facing the front of car B, where the magnet of car A, the north pole of the magnet of car A is facing the south pole of the magnet of car B. As a result, the cars attract each other. Now place the toy cars close to each other such that the rear side of car A faces the front side of car B. Do they move as before? Here, the rear of car A facing the front of car B, that is, the south pole of the magnet attached on car A is facing the south pole of the magnet attached on car B. The two poles are facing each other and when we moved car B, it pushed car A away, that is, the two south poles repel each other. Repeat the activity by placing cars with their rear sides facing each other. Here, rear of car B facing rear of car A. So, now you will see that both cars again attracted each other and collided, which means north pole and south pole attract each other. Next, place the car A behind car B and note the direction in which they move in each case. Here, the south pole of the magnet attached on car A is placed behind the north pole of the magnet which is attached to car B. Now you will see that the magnets attached to the cars have north pole towards each other. As a result, the cars are pushing each other. That is, north pole is repelling north pole. So we learnt here that similar poles repel each other and dissimilar poles attract each other. 
which means North Pole repels North Pole and South Pole repels South Pole and North Pole attracts South Pole. A few precautions we should take for maintaining magnets. Magnets lose their properties if they are heated, hammered or dropped from some height. Also, magnets become weak if they are not stored properly. To keep them safe, bar magnets should be kept in pairs with their unlike poles on the same side. They must be separated by a piece of wood while two pieces of soft iron should be placed across their ends. For horseshoe magnet, one should keep a piece of iron across the poles. Keep magnets away from cassettes, mobiles, television, music system, compact discs and the computer. Children, now we will see the summary of this chapter. Magnetite is a natural magnet. Artificial magnets can be made in various shapes. Each magnet has two magnetic poles, north and south. Opposite poles of two magnets attract each other, whereas similar poles repel one another. Magnets are used in electric motors, generators, speakers, cranes and compass etc. Children, now I will ask you a few questions and I hope that you all might be knowing the answers. First of all, we will start with fill in the blanks. And my first fill in the blank is the materials which do not get attracted towards magnet are called dash. So what do we call such materials? They are non-magnetic. My next question, a magnet always have dash poles. So a magnet always have two poles. Now I will ask whether the statement is true or false. And my first statement is cylindrical magnet has only one pole. True or false? And it is a false statement. Next, artificial magnet was invented in Greece. True or false? And this is also a false statement. My next question is, iron is a magnetic material. True or false? And this is a true statement. My next question is, where are the poles of a bar magnet located? So tell me, where are the poles of a bar magnet located? Poles of a bar magnet are located at its end, that is North Pole and South Pole. My next question, state any two properties of magnet. The two properties of magnet are, magnet attracts iron or magnetic materials towards it. A magnet has two poles, North Pole and South Pole. Let me tell you another property of a magnet also. A freely suspended magnet always align in North-South direction. Children, with this we complete our chapter and I hope that you all must have understood it well and enjoyed all the activities we did with the help of magnets. Children, stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning and keep growing. Thank you so much.